Okay, you'll see this is the, the bare bones of it. Um, all my bench work is sort of the open grid. You'll see where those two little bridges are. That's the bar end. You've probably seen quite a few photos of it scenic. So at this point, it probably would have been a great idea to start at the back where those scenery boards are and work my way to the front. But, oh no, I thought it'd be a great idea to get the finite scenery done at the front there. Probably getting uh, ahead of ourselves here a little bit. Uh, I don't actually have any footage of this. So I've only thought about doing this video since uh, making this scenery. But you saw the picture before uh, in its bare form. So from here, those hills, they're pretty well just made up of cardboard webbing and also chicken wire. And I've just formed it all up. Now you can see some rock carvings and all that there. Those, those gray bits that are still yet to be um, scribed up and weathered correctly. It's just um, like a, a paper mache sculpt from old type material that I make. But as you can see, it's getting quite a, f a ways back to the back of the layout and quite hard to get to. So the tree I'm holding up there against that HO person is just a cheap Chinese tree. I work on a three foot rule. They look quite fine up on the back, the backdrop there. So that's exactly the same tree that you'll find up the back there. I don't do anything to them. I just plonk them up there to uh, get a bit of texture and color. So this next bit really does make me cringe. Um, obviously to get these trees into to the back scenery, I've got to lean right across, drill into it. It's very hard to glue them. Put the drill down on the track, which isn't desirable. I mean, lucky I haven't sort of damaged any roadbed or any track at this point in time, but I've been ultra, ultra careful. But as you can see, some of the trees are still a little bit wonky at this point in time because they obviously you can't or up close enough to actually straighten them up. So you sort of got to hop down, hop back up, check the alignment and then try to do the best you can this is very much case in point you can see i've gone ahead and done probably a dozen trees at this point i've actually run out so you can see they're all still a little bit wonky i have since gone back and aligned them the best i can but what i'm gonna have to do i need to add a little bit more texture at the front there using some mini nature type product and woodland scenic. as you can see i'm using woodland scenics gear um, that's their clump foliage medium green big proponent of that and as you can see now this is me climbing up this was pretty well the reason why i did this video the amount of weight that i'm putting on that track there just purely to reach over the back there is i'm surprised i didn't break the road bed um, i did check all the ballast and all that afterwards just to make sure it was all good but um yeah case in point do the scenery at the back first and work forward so at this point here I'm using the Woodland Scenics clump foliage to sort of just break up that line between the scenery backboard and the trees just to sort of take that horizon away. Also because of the process of me stuffing up the scenery there's a bit of paint splatter and the like on there so I'm just trying to hide all that. It sort of looks really nice I think. It sort of breaks up that scene quite nicely and it's coming along well. So this is the, the light green version of the, the clump foliage that I'll just uh, break up the uh, the color variations there from sort of a, a dark to a light green i've also got a, a really light green but uh, i'll use that a bit later on sparingly so this is just a, a close-up view of that little valley that i was working on before uh, i don't know if i mentioned but that glue is just run-of-the-mill pva glue nothing special not special scenery glue just cheap over-the-counter pva glue that i'm sticking that down with here I'm just working in all the gaps and all that between the trees the best I can to try to hide that line between the, the scenery backboard and um, the hills at the front. Okay, here you can see I'm using a set of generic barbecue tongs. This part of the layer is quite deep, deeper than the other part that you saw me on before. So insert Benny Hill music here, I think. Um, that's, a, that's the only way literally, physically, I could get to the back of the layout to put any sort of clump foliage in there those trees were put in there by my kids when they were doing the, the the wire form up before so i'm doing the best i can you can see i've already got glue on the backdrop there so another epic fail i'm just um really ballsing this section up i think but um so please guys start at the back work your way to the front at this point in time i've run out of trees uh, to put along back there so i'm just going to start adding some texture at the front of the track there um, so what I'm going to look at using is a, a, a brand called Hecky, a German brand. Uh, there it is there. So it's like a, it's like very, very small clump foliage glued to a, like a, a matting type thing where you can actually tease it out to make it, to make it larger. It's quite a, a lovely product to work with. 
and it adds some uh, lovely detail and texture. So there it is there. You, as you saw, you just tease it out with your fingers, and it, uh, a pack like that goes quite a long way. So as you can see, I'm just building up the, the texture and the colors to this location. What I'm trying to achieve here is, uh, you can see it's a, sort of a little swale, bottom of the hill where it levels out a little bit, so it's quite logical that uh, water would pull there, meaning that you're more likely to get your weeds and bushes, um, and a little bit flatter. So I just try to look for areas like that that would stand out to... Uh, where foliage would grow so often quite often i will refer back to to nature itself um, as per kathy millet um, gave me that idea that to refer back to uh, nature mother nature itself to to get inspiration and how landforms would form up at this point i'm going to add some spray adhesive to that general area so what i'm trying to do is just trying to just keep building that color building the texture so right now I've got this little knock applicator. It's like a little plastic puffer bottle. Um, you'd be surprised how well it uh, how well it works. Just get a bit of a shake. Gets a little bit of static electricity from your hand. You just puff it out around. Sorry for the angle of the, the camera there with my arm in the way. But as you can see, it's just the top that top edge there. It's just sort of blended in a little bit nicer uh, with a bit of static grass. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to use some medium ballast from Woodland Scenics. Put it in the little hopper. Uh, which I bought online from eBay, just a cheap one. You'll see as I run the little hopper out here, it just makes a nice little uh, shoulder each side. I've tried various ways of doing my, my ballasting, and I find this is the, the quickest and easiest way, particularly with uh, the issues I had with actually reaching it regarding my scenery. The big issue I found with tidying up the ballast, as you can see, um, obviously a soft one-inch brush to try to neaten it all up and get it all off the ties, but because you sort of can't get over the top of it to get it nice and close uh, to see what you're doing, it made it very difficult. So I tried various methods um, to try to do it. Obviously the, the, the paintbrush is the first one. Okay, the next method I tried was uh, one I saw on YouTube by Charlie from Chadwick Model Railway. It obviously uses a, the vacuum with a, a stocking over the end, catching the, the excess ballast now. He calls it speed ballasting, and it is quite speedy, but the issue I had with doing it was the rest of my scenery out the front, so hence the premise of this video. It does do quite a good job. You've just got to be a little bit careful because on occasions you can suck up too much ballast depending on how powerful your vacuum cleaner is. Then from there, it's just a matter of em emptying that stocking out back into your, to your ballast container and saving it to, for the next lot as I'm doing there. I think it has a lot of merit, this, um, this technique. But you've got to be very careful about uh, your scenery up the front. So this next technique is a bit of an experimental. So what I actually do, you can see I'm just banging a, a, a bottle on the top there. What that actually does is just knock the, the ballast off the top of the tie. So if you just slowly bang across the top there, it's actually that's a quite an effective way of doing it as well. And then I'll just go through with a nice, fine little brush and just finish off the job um, getting the the errant ballast off those ties so i just tried that as a bit of a, an experiment uh, in conjunction with uh, chadwick's um, model railway version as well with the vacuum cleaner just to show two different ways that i've looked at um, doing my ballast in hard to reach positions so at this point you can see i give the uh, ballast a bit of a spray i use just plain water and a few drops of isopropanol I just find that uh, adds a bit acts as a better wetting agent. Some of you may ask, why do we wet the track down as that? People that might be new to model rail riding. So what it actually does, it acts as a wetting agent. Gets down between all the different granules, separate granules of the ballast. So when you put the glue in, as I'm doing now, it'll run all the way through and bind it all together. So the glue I use is just a 50-50 mix. 50% water, 50% just normal PVA glue. Shake it together in that little shaker bottle and... Away we go. I find the little needle nose bottle that I've got there makes it a lot easier um, just so you don't disturb the ballast after you've sort of probably knows for the beginners out there that I do three passes on it. So what I mean by that, I go up and down the track three times. So the first one will be normally on the, the furthest point away from me, so the outside of the sleepers, and then I'll do a pass through the middle and then a pass on the sleepers on the, the near side of the track just so you get a nice soaking all the way through. With this track, because obviously I've got that track in front that needs to be ballasted as well, I'm not too concerned about the, the edge of, or the neatness of the edge of the ballast, because um, I sort of tidy that as I go. 
Okay, guys, that's the, the end of this first video on my scenery. Not so much of a how-to scenery, but a how not to do my scenery. As you can see in the picture, it eventually has turned out all right. I still need to add a little more texture and color to that, but that's got to come in due course. That's a bit easier to get to with a long paintbrush. But as I've gone through this whole video, please just work from the back to the front. It's a lot easier for those hard to get places and you won't have to go through the trials and tribulations that I did. So thanks guys for watching again. Okay guys, make sure you make comment below. Make sure you click that little bell icon to be advised of upcoming videos. Give it a thumbs up. Share with all your mates and all that other good stuff. Make sure you go to my website www.modelrailroadtechniques.com Thanks for watching. See you next time.